Hello, assalamu alaikum, good evening and welcome to another episode of Health is Wealth. I am your host Shabnam Riaz. Hope you've had a splendid week. Today we're going to bring you a topic that is about to you know, affect many, many people. If you have access to a smartphone, to the internet, then of course you'd be using social media. Now, for many people, social media takes up a quite a, a sizable percentage of their lives. What is it doing for you? Is there any chance it could be harming you? Well, we're going to talk about that today and the impacts of social media on your health, not just your physical health, but your mental well-being as well. Uh, with us today, we have in the studios Mahrukh Mustansa, who's a clinical and a media psychologist for the Pakistan Psychological Association, and she's a certified clinical psychologist as well. Thank you very much, Mahrukh, for joining us here Thank today. Thank you so much for having me in your show. Okay, so, you know, we're looking forward to discussing quite a few things today. How many people do you think actually realize themselves that social media is impacting their health? Well, in Pakistan, this mental health has been neglected many times when mm. we talk about mental health and its effect on, uh, and especially the effect of social media mm. on mental health. We negate it mm. because mostly people think that there is not any kind of mental health that exists in their lives. Right. They feel like that social media is the only platform for them, for, for the catharsis, for their self-identity, for the self-recognition. Mm. But unfortunately, when we go into the deeper study to that, we get to know that mm. social media is having the devastating psychological problems. Mm. On daily basis, I am getting a lot of patients and clients being affected by the social media. They are the factors of depressive illness, but they do mm. not know what's the cause of, to that. Mm. And when we go into the detailed analysis, we mm. get to know the unconfronted use of social media mm. is leading towards the unattending consequences for them. Right. We are creating an internal monologue in us. Okay. And that is really problematic. So what is that clients. monologue? What, what, what are we doing? Many disorders, like eating disorders for mm -hmm. the females, mm -hmm. psychological problems. There had been many researches by the Psychological Association that uh, the, on the impact of social media on mental health. And they say that uh, depressive illness, anxiety and mm -hmm. stress are mm -hmm. the most rated psychological problems. And uh, that's how the social media is affecting our individuals and our generation these days. Right, okay. Um, as you know, we're doing the reason that we're doing today's program is because we've you know we recognise that these things, you know, they're tools. They have to be used wisely, just as television or any other you know um, any other thing, any other facility, gadget, whatever, what have you. Everything needs to have a balance. Absolutely. It seems that when we cross over that line of balance, Absolutely. that we maybe lose, in, lose touch with reality. Absolutely. Now, how often is that happening? Well, I would like to mention over here one thing. When we talk about the philosophy of psychology, mm. there's a central point of the soul. And that central point is basically what keeps you balanced. Uh -huh. And if that central point has been snatched, uh -huh. the soul goes at its extremes. And extreme okay. has no ends. This is exactly what social media is doing in, on today's generation. Mm. And what do they actually do? Mm. They are born in the instant gratification. Oh, yes. They want everything in an instant. Mm. If they want to watch a movie, they go uh, on the Netflix, log on to their, their account and watch a movie. If mm. they want to read a book, they go uh, on the Amazon and mm. read a book. Mm. If they want to watch anything, Mm. The, you know, we have so many forums, social media forums available that they, they watch it over there. Mm. Unfortunately, what is missing in their lives mm. are patients. Mm. They, they are just in the habit of getting everything so instantly mm. that they do not have patience. The society has become intolerant. Absolutely. They don't have impatience. And social media didn't tell us three things. Mm. Satisfaction, mm. patience, Mm. and satisfaction to your job and your academia. Mm. Whenever I am getting you know, patients, especially from the age group of 18 to 21 years, mm. they usually are the patients with the chronic insomnia mm. and the depressive illness, and they mm. do not know the cause. And when I ask them, they say, we are perhaps dissatisfied from our jobs. And when I ask them how long you have been working, mm. they just say, it's, it's just been two weeks. And mm. then I realize, 
that they this, this is not their fault hmm. actually they are born in the society of instant gratification hmm. they are getting everything in an instant hmm. they are you know they do not learn patience hmm. and uh, what 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 do the society what do this generation needs to know is the significance of few emotions hmm. that have been attached with our lives hmm. that's why these days the relationships are also shaky Yes. Because people do not have endurance, mm. people do not have patience. Mm. It's not their fault. Mm. Children these days, youngsters these days are having intelligent mind. Yeah. They are bright people. Mm. They have beautiful minds. Mm. But it's been fragmented by the use of social media, mm. which has you know, taught them nothing mm. but impatience. Mm. Okay, uh, very, very, you know, interesting points that you are talking about. And of course, you know, the, the, the things that people have to understand and have to recognize as well. Now, when, you know, we're talking about the instant gratification, uh, and you're talking about patience as well, very, very important Absolutely. words here. The, you know, the joy that you feel mm for achieving something after a wait. You know, that joy is, it, it's, you, you can't um, uh, compare anything to that. Even if I would talk about, you know, when letter writing was uh, in, you know, when we used to write letters, the joy and the anticipation you used to have when you uh, received a letter that you were waiting for, if it's an overseas letter, then easily, you know, it was about 15 days or 10, 12 days, depending on where the letter was coming from. And you would wait that amount of time Absolutely. for what the person, you know, who, you, who was going to reply to your letter was going to write. And then you would take out exactly as you are saying, you would take out a piece of paper and concentrate on each word that was written. And it had a whole different meaning to it. Absolutely. So, okay, so this is the world that we're, we're living in. It's something you can't separate yourself from. What should a person be doing to have some sort of balance in life then? Well, uh, this is a very nice question. They need to first um, audit their social diet. Ah, By very, very interesting. By saying this, uh, that they need to audit their social diet, I mean to say that they need to question themselves mm. that either this medium is uh, having the positive effects on them or a negative effects. Okay. We need to realize that there is a problem mm. in order to solve that. Of we course. need to recognize the problem. Mm. But unfortunately, many of us do not do that. Mm. Many of us think <coughs> that social media is not a problem. It's just a platform for the learning. But unfortunately, yeah. we are not aware of the devastating effect that it's causing. Mm. It's just like similar to the substance abuse substance abuse. You know, uh, there had been many researchers in the Psychological Association. Mm. The conclusion that they made was basically when few of the university students were mm. asked to stop social media, mm. they uh, experienced the symptoms of insomnia, mm. they experienced withdrawal. the symptom of withdrawal, mm. they experienced the symptoms of anxiety. Mm. And this is exactly what social media is doing with us. We need to recognize a problem first in order to make it balance. Of course. And then audit your social diet. That is very mm. important. Uh -huh. Okay, very, very interesting. You know, as we said, the central point of a person's yeah. soul. Okay, so when we are, you know, uh, sort of sharing things about ourselves on social media, well, of course, then that puts us in a powerful position because we are giving people a, a version of our life that we want them to see. It may be true, it may be altered, it may be exaggerated. So having that power at your command, how, you know, uh, how devastating can that be? How can that make you suffer an alter ego? Um, actually, you know what, when oh, we are sharing about ourselves on social media. Mm. There had been many researchers in Canadian Psychological Association that uh, there is a compound present in our brain that's released that is called dopamine. Mm -hmm. That's usually rela released when we achieve something, mm -hmm. especially in terms of food, mm. money, and mm. sex. Mm -hmm. Exactly this is happening when we are uh, using the social media for mm. our 
own gratification. Mm. We are quantifying ourselves. Mm. We are more getting into the social approval. I mm. am not saying that not to use social media, mm. but I'm mm. just saying the that we need to have a balance. A balance and do it mindfully. A, exactly. Mm. We need to have that moderate approach. Mm. That is very, very, very much necessary mm. for our own mental health. Mm. Mm. But we do not give importance to that part. Mm. We just say that we are just doing catharsis. It's good for our self-identity. Mm. Yeah, it is good. But mm. excessive use to the to the social media is actually devastating. Mm. Mm. And how to keep the balance is basically you need to recognize the problem that you are suffering with. Absolutely, absolutely. And another thing, you know, as, as you just said, uh, the thing to not let it interfere with real life yeah. because they. Uh, you're speaking basically, you know, you're not having a conversation. They're just words that are being typed in between people. So establishing a relationship just on uh, social media yeah. or on other media platforms would be something that, you know, you're not really getting the full picture of the other person. Absolutely. You really don't know a lot of things about them. And then many people, because as we're speaking about emotions, can get upset from you know something somebody may have said to them or a, or an inappropriate relationship tell us about the hazards of that well <clears throat> mostly people are having interpersonal problems because of the social media as you mentioned mm. because they do not know the deeper meaning of joy they do mm. not know the deeper meaning of happiness mm. they do not know the deeper meaning of any relationship mm. they are so much into the virtual world mm. that they have forgotten the real life that they have True. forgotten the real relationship. Mm. And the unconfronted use of social media is leading towards an anti-social behavior in yeah. many of the individuals. Yes, very true. And this anti-social behavior keeps them isolated with the reality. Mm. And that's one of the reasons their personal relationships are becoming shaky these days. Mm. They have become so much impatient mm for you know for maintaining a good relation for mm. having a good emotional health mm. you need to have a balance mm. you need to know the deeper meaning to that everything comes with the time mm. but this generation born in the instant gratification mm. have forgotten the meaning of consistency mm. have forgotten the meaning of patience mm. have forgotten the meaning of time because mm. they just want everything instantly even mm. love even joy even mm. happiness even relationship fame even fame. Yeah. And this takes consistency. Mm. But they are not able to be consistent. Mm. What we need to learn in our lives are that we have to be consistent. Mm. We have to have a moderate approach. Mm. To, uh, to, to sort of think as well Absolutely. as to what you're doing. Exactly. And what you're going through, what, exactly. ex what feelings you're going through. Exactly. And what exactly toll it's taking because many a time you look at you know social media or Facebook or whatever and when when you're going through a news feed you know sometimes it often strikes me that you'll be able to see a, a, a post shared that is something about somebody getting married or is something very joyous or something very happy and so all of a sudden you are involved in that emotion and then you just scroll down a bit and you'll see something that's really tragic or something that is you know really heart-wrenching so then your emotions all of a sudden change there mm, then you may come across something that may offend you yeah. and so this is actually an emotional roller coaster absolutely, as well. Absolutely, actually. absolutely. That's one of the reasons that these days youngsters are having a lot of tantrums. They're throwing the tantrums on every second and every single thing. Mm. And that's really problematic for them. Plus, uh, as talking about the news feed on the social media, I must um, mention one of the research that had been done by the Psychological Association. Mm. Uh, when the social media forums were being researched by them, mm. YouTube was rated number one as the most productive social medium, okay. followed by Twitter, Facebook, and the worst social medium that was been considered mm. by the Psychological Association was Instagram. Uh -huh. Why? Mm. Because that medium is all for your pictures, quantifying yourself. Mm. And what happens when you are looking at the picture of someone, mm. usually what happens, there's a phenomenon of FOMO, fear of missing out. Oh. Oh, I really want us to discuss that one. Yes, because a very important one. Exactly, okay. because people think that they are not taken in the loop. They have been missed out. If they see someone enjoying their vacations, their relationship, they just 
compare themselves with you know those people mm. and then they feel devastated oh my god this person is enjoying their lives what are we doing over here so you true. Know, that is the comparison mm. and when comparison happen there is an emotion that is called jealousy mm. oh that that happens in an individual mm. and it t if it takes control over you Mm. then you are psychologically devastated mm. then you are depressed mm. because you are constantly comparing yourself comparing yourself and you are dissatisfied from your mm. own self mm. okay tell us some of the symptoms of jealousy if somebody is you know really really indulging in in jealousy from someone a particular person or a situation or whatever how does that manifest in a person well uh, they would never appreciate mm. you Mm -hmm. They would never appreciate your success. They would mm. never appreciate uh, your achievement. Mm -hmm. and they would more, uh, you know, they would more be critical towards your each and everything. Mm. They would more be critique. Mm. They will throw their tantrums on you. Mm. So these are the basic symptoms of jealousy. Plus they would not like to sit with you. Mm. But then that's the jealousy that you can see. Yeah. What about the jealousy that's masked? Because that's oh, very dangerous. Yeah, that's very dangerous. You know, there is a theory of Carl Jung. He talked about persona. Mm -hmm. Persona is basically a phenomena in which a person masks himself. Uh -huh. One is the person, you know, uh, there is a two sides of an individual. Mm. One is what he is trying to show. Mm. And one, what he's actually having. Right. And this is really hard to understand mm. that what this person is uh, having in his mind for you, mm. what sort of intentions mm. he's having for you. Mm. That is the phenomena of per persona mm. and it is followed by shadow. Shadow is the phenomena that is the extreme side of an individual, mm. the constructive energies or the destructive energies. Okay. People who have been jealous will, you know, that will be shown in their behavior somehow. Mm. Mm. Mm they would be more into the destructive energies. Mm. They would be more into, you know, destroying you mm. in, a, in some manipulative ways. Mm. Mm. So jealousy is an emotion that has been shown mm. In and it's behavior. timeless. It's been throughout the ages. Yeah. Many a, a novel and many a sort of history has been uh, written, rewritten with these emotions in absolutely. play. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is something that a human being is born with. You have all these emotions. You have all these feelings. So many things are going on. What you have to really be careful of what you're saying is to be mindful yeah. of the assault that social media is taking on us Absolutely. what feelings it is generating and what we're going to do about it okay now the fear of missing out it seems to be something that is a sort of an epidemic at the moment yeah. you will see people you know especially the younger generation always in comparison yeah. and then as you said the thankfulness element is you know you look at somebody and you will think they have so much they have been blessed with so much but they can't see it yeah. so then what do you do what's your advice well uh, there are a few strategies psychological strategies that we need to follow mm. there are preventive strategies mm -hmm. coping strategies mm -hmm. and as I said that uh, audit your social diet mm -hmm. creating more good online experiences mm -hmm. rather than focusing on someone else's life because once we are focusing on other people's life, we are actually making ourselves more dissatisfied. Dissatisfied, yes. Sometimes we need to focus on ourselves too. Hmm. We need our time too. Hmm. We need our lives too. Hmm. You know, there were times a decades ago when people used to go out. They used to have a coffee time with their friends. Hmm. They used to have an outdoor activities like sports and all that. Hmm. But unfortunately, this era Mm. has been trapped by the social media, by the electronic gadgets. Mm. And we have become so much socially isolated. Mm. We have 200, 300 thousands friends on Facebook and Instagram. And many of them we don't know personally. Exactly. But in actual, we don't have even a single friend in our life with yeah. whom we can share our worries. <laughs> the time has changed, a tr uh, has changed so much. It has mm. taken a transitional phase. Mm just because we are not keeping an eye mm. on ourselves. Yeah, true. We are going towards extremes. Mm. We are not making it a moderate approach. Mm. If something is given to us, we are just using it 24 seven. Mm. We don't yeah. have that patience. Right. So do you suggest to your patients, you know, for some time, 
put away your phones, yeah. put away your internet, put away your gadgets and focus on something else. Yeah. What is that you that you Meditation. Tell them? Usually I suggest meditation to the patients because you know when someone is coming to the psychologist, you know, I would like to mention one thing over here because mm. people usually get confused when they are being trapped by the social media and they are having, you know, the mental health problems because mm. of the social media. They're confused either to go for a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Mm. So here I would like to mention that psychologist, it's a person who will, you know, apply therapies on you. Okay. It's like cognitive behavioral therapy, behavioral mm. therapy, PMRT. Usually people who are affected of social media are having the social anxieties. Mm. Seven out of ten <coughs> person, they're having social anxiety. Okay. They are having depressive illness and depressive illness has, you know, a lot of types. Mm. It goes on and on and on. Mm. And what we usually do for such people are the progressive muscle relaxation techniques and to treat the generalized anxiety disorder or the panic disorder mm. or the social anxiety or we go for the deep breathing exercise uh, for our patients, for our clients, mm. because it keeps you relaxed. Is this something that they can find online as well, or do they have to go and see a psychologist uh, for this? Well, um, when they have uh, to go, you know, when they're, they're planning to go to mm. a psychologist, mm. uh, there is a supervised treatment. So if you are doing it at home, mm. this is not a supervised treatment. Okay. Right. So if, if, you know, two to three sessions happen, because psychotherapy is basically the professional way of counseling. Uh -huh. It's a professional because such patients first, first needs to be counseled. Mm. And then they have to go into the second step that is the therapeutic techniques. Mm. If they're not being counseled because they are not in a view of, uh, uh, you know, um, stopping the use of social media. Many people, as you said, do not know what's wrong with them. Yeah. They're just confused. They're confused to the amount of emotions that they're feeling. Exactly. May be alien to them. Exactly. And, um, you know, for some of them, they may not have even the slightest idea that social media is behind this. Absolutely. How many wake up calls have you given your patients who have come in who have been completely clueless? Well, almost 80%. I must say. That's a huge number. And you know, most of the patients who are coming to me are youngsters, are children. Children. And as young as how? Exactly. It's like eight years old, 12 eight years, old. years yeah, old. Yeah. And I was also reading uh, a few of the researches of uh, Canadian Psychological Association. Mm. They have recently done a contemporary research on children that uh, seven to 12 graded children who were using uh, Facebook and Instagram excessively, especially two hours per day, they were the sufferers of anxiety, depression, and stress. These are the most rated uh, psychological problems that mm. even seventh graders' children Seven. are having. Imagine. And you know, I, um, I see these patients on a daily basis. They're having the delusional thoughts of Delus dying too. Uh -huh. yeah, and they feel like th they're going to die. And I, I ask them, why are you having these thoughts? Because they keep on reading on social media how that happens how what happens that what happens uh, uh, and how you know uh, such kind of things they are having the delusional thoughts that how death happens mm. and then those symptoms they just uh, apply those symptoms uh, on themselves and say we are having these symptoms uh, we're gonna die sort of like the googling exactly. syndrome where you're googling exactly. all your, okay okay and reading few articles on facebook uh -huh. that is not actually a research article they're just the posts and all right, that and right. they believe in that mm -hmm. without without going into the deeper interpretation to it mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you have a child who's as young as, as you said, eight or nine years old, what do you tell their parents? Well, uh, we actually go for the professional counseling of the parents as well, mm. and we ask them not to give uh, them, you know, not to provide them with the excessive use of the social media, excessive use of the electronic gadgets, because mm. there is a research into cognitive neuroscience. When you are exposed to the electronic gadgets, you are more prone to have the neurological problems, to have the psychological problems, and mm -hmm. these days parents are providing the electronic gadgets to their children even at the age of two years. Even two, younger? Yeah, even two years, you, you know, if a child is, you know, uh, just of two years or three mm. years, they are playing games on the palm top, on mm. the laptop, mm. on the tablet, mm. and, you know, you are actually teaching them how not to enjoy the real life, how to be separated with the reality. Mm. And such children, when grow up, 
Hmm. They are like, they are so impatient and they're so aggressive. Even you can see Aggression. children these days, even hmm. five years old, six years old, seven years old, hmm. they have, you know, they are, they are having a chronic disobedience to their parents hmm. because uh, parents are not spending time with them. Very, that very quality important time point. It's not missing out. Because the parents are probably also being involved in social media yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. The addiction just it goes, it has a domino effect. Exactly. It starts at one point place and just goes on exactly, and on exactly. so you know how okay what is it that we should be doing how often should we be putting our phones down you know as of course you can't have a general rule for everybody yeah. but what is a healthy amount of time that you can give to social media one hour one hour a day is yeah. this okay for for many people this will be a shock <laughs> yeah <laughs> me included i i have to uh, admit to this <laughs> so i thought you were going to say something like five hours <laughs> six hours just one hour one really hour. you know what uh, there had been uh, as i told before and as i mentioned before that there had been many psychological researches based on the social media that even people who are using uh, social media two hours per day hmm. suffers from chronic insomnia hmm depressive illness, mm -hmm. anxiety, mm. and stress. Why is that, if just two hours a day of that, and why does it give you, give you insomnia? Why, why, why is because the Because they're constantly uh, thinking about how many likes do they get? Mm -hmm. How many comments did they get? Okay. And they're constantly thinking about other people's life. This is mm -hmm. a you know, natural human brain process mm. that happens. This is a natural cognitive process that happens. Mm. When you are, you know, comparing yourself with someone, mostly youngsters are comparing themselves with others mm. most of the time. Mm. Especially when it comes to females, mm. you know, they have they have um, inculcated that internal monologue of eating disorders so That's much. That's Anorexia true. nervosa, bulimia mm. nervosa. Mm. They are just so much obsessed with their thin figure yeah. that they restrict their diet just because their friend slimmer than them and or looks exactly slimmer. exactly or looks more exactly. sculpted or contoured Absolutely. or whatever it is because they are seeing their pictures on the time uh, on the instagram yeah and uh, their life is also now filtered <laughs> exactly so exactly. that's how it's you know leading uh, our generation mm. to the devastating what point. are you telling girls who come to you Counseling. with this problem uh, I've been counseling them a lot mm -hmm. because uh, we need to counsel them first mm. and then we need to counsel their environment, especially, you know, parents, their uh, primary support group. We need mm. to counsel them as well. It's mm. a long process. Mm. It takes three to four sessions mm. minimum mm. with such, uh, you know, girls because uh, many of the girls, they're, they just, uh, if they want to eat something mm. that they, they really like to eat, mm. they, they will eat it in, in a second in one go and then they will induce a vomit. That is bulimia yeah. nervosa. nervosa. Okay, for, for uh, mothers and, and, and fathers who are watching this program, who may not know that their daughter is suffering from this eating disorder, what are the signs? Actually, she will not eat anything. Right, okay, so the dinner table, yeah. everybody's sitting down yeah, she, and she's not eating. She, she won't even uh, Is this water. just confined, is this a majority for females or can uh, uh, boys get this too? No, uh, boys usually no, do not get they because do not. innately because females this is, are more conscious, okay, about, conscious about their weight exactly, and their figure and everything. Exactly. Okay, so what are the symptoms? They, they won't eat anything. And, uh, you know, if you will cook something for <coughs> your daughter, she will mm. not eat anything. She will just say, um, I'm just worried about my weight. You know, I've been having a lot of patients of this nervosa and mm. who are the victim of nervosa. Their mothers were saying to me, why my daughter doesn't eat anything? Why mm. is she so much obsessed with her figure? Why is she saying that she should look Thin. Mm. And when I asked her, there's a cyber bullying going on in the social media. Cyber bullying. Because people are commenting and critically, uh, you know, commenting mm. on their pictures and passing some kind of uh, uh, comments that they do not want to listen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is creating the, that cognitive process in, in their minds mm. that they shouldn't eat anything because people are not going to accept them. So this is how we are quantifi quantifying ourselves. This mm. is how we are making ourselves being victim to the quantification, mm. being victim to the social approval. Mm. And that is devastating. Mm. That is devastating. Mm. It is not only nervosa. There are many other disorders that females are going through and they're more prone to the psychological problems than males. Okay. The reason is this, that innately, females are more sensitive than males. Uh-huh. Innately. Mm -hmm. They overthink. Okay. 
they this is because why um this is a natural cognitive makeup of a female okay this is a natural cognitive makeup okay they think a lot uh -huh. that's uh, true you know, <laughs> agree <laughs> males are more like their mind is more calculated Practical. More factual, yeah. yeah. More practical. More logical, exactly. maybe. You know, this is a problem I have to deal with this hands on. Exactly. Uh, for us, it's usually more, okay, this can be a problem. Exactly. Let me think about this and worry myself to death. You know, yeah, I exactly, agree. Exactly. Yeah. They're more into the, you know, their minds are more factual, their <laughs> minds are more rational, males. But females are more emotional. Oh, you yes. know, if the same problem is given, you know, if we can have a controlled experiment, the psychological experiment, yeah. we can have uh, one male sitting and one female sitting, yeah. and we just give a simple problem statement to them. Yeah. You will see that males would be having more factual grounds, yeah. and females would be having more emotional grounds. Right. They constantly want reassurance. Uh -huh. They constantly want reassurance. Right. So this is a natural cognitive makeup. So that speaks of a lot of insecurities as well, yeah. doesn't it? That's so how right. can you make yourself more secure, especially you know the youngsters, the young girls who are out there using Instagram, as you said, and they're they're watching other girls, you know, with or, or whatever, and uh, you, the comparison because everybody is beautiful in their own right. Absolutely, this is something that you have to tell them. You have to exactly. you have to get it's, this message across exactly. that you know whoever you are, whatever you are, you have been made beautiful and you Absolutely. are beautiful because you are the original you. Yeah, exactly. and there is no bigger beauty yeah. than being original. Yeah, because God has created a human being as an imperfect. Mm -hmm. human being. Mm -hmm. We are not perfect. Every one of us are having imperfections. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we are full of imperfections. We have some qualities too. Mm -hmm. If someone is blessed with good looks, the other must be having good talent, exactly. uh, good you know, academics. Mm -hmm. they, mi they might be having uh, good communication skills. Mm -hmm. you, you know, every second individual has been blessed with something better Absolutely. than the other. Absolutely true. You need to understand that. Mm. You need to, um, you need to think mm. that, you know, we are not perfect. We actually, we are teaching our daughters mm. to be perfect. Mm. We need to teach our daughters to be brave. That's okay, important. the role of the family here then. Yeah. The mother, especially. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we see a lot of things, what I'm going to talk about with you as well right now, is we see a lot of things that are stereotypical in our society. Absolutely. A uh, lot of things go on about dark skins. Yeah. This is something I feel very, very strongly Absolutely. about. Absolutely. We have, you know, whole companies out there who are uh, exploiting people because um, they're, they're promising them that, you know, you're going to get a white skin and, and, and suggest. <laughs> things that are saying that only you're only going to look good if you are fair-skinned so Absolutely. where what sort of a devastating psychological impact does that have on female uh, members of our society who are dark-skinned and how can we get this message across yeah. that this is something that is completely unacceptable you know the thing that you have mentioned over here about the companies about the corporate organization that are, that are actually creating this kind of dilemma in females mind that is basically the phenomenon of the psychology that we called modeling mm -hmm. and also the social learning theory that has been um, given by Albert Bandura that mm. we're learning from our society and the media uh, social media specifically and electronic media too that is a prime platform for the projection of our societal views, the fabricated societal views, mm. that we are shaping minds of people. Mm. And uh, mostly females, they just feel like they're just, you know, watching a commercial and they just say, oh, I'm going to use this cream and I'll, I'll look better by using this cream. They're, they're using, you know, the, those creams, but mm. <laughs> no effects, honestly. Yeah, but yeah. They need to be satisfied with mm. their own skin mm. because everyone is beautiful. Mm. It's just because the modeling phenomena is happening, the psychological modeling is happening mm. in our society these days because of the media. And not only that, that Monica, you know, it really makes me... Uh, it, it's so, you know, you think to yourself that this is just so ironic yeah. that if you move towards the West, they're using so much money on tanning yeah, lotions and exactly. sitting in the sun and, and so many beach, things. Exactly. And um, they're spending all their money there and um, they want to look tan and here it's the other way around. So we'll get back to this uh, point right now. We're going for a break. Do not change the channel.
Okay, welcome back to the program. Now, you know, we're having a fantastic time today talking about the impact of social media on our mental health and, you know, what that it's really doing in shaping a person's mind. And then while we were talking about that, we were talking about society and societies, you know, the, the ideas, the conceived notions that we have for what beauty is and what, how that is harming uh, people in, in, you know, in our country, especially girls who are very vulnerable. We spoke about, you know, as we were talking about, you know, Maruha, I had a whole list of questions here, but it seems that, you know, we weren't able to get onto any of these because other things were so interesting that Absolutely. we're talking about. We spoke about complexions. We spoke about, you know, how this is being mis misinterpreted in society, how it's being enforced, then reinforced, Absolutely. and then the impact that this has. A very real dilemma that we are suffering from is marriage proposals, girls getting married. You will see that the awful way that they are asked to sit down or bring in a tray and sit in front yeah. of people who will inspect her yeah. like um, an object or a piece Absolutely. of furniture and then pass very unkind remarks. Absolutely. How do we do away with all this? Well, <clears throat> unfortunately, you know, that has become the part of our society. Hmm. And uh, even people coming to me with, you know, having these problem, marriage problems, hmm. that they're unable to get married because just, just because of their complexion, just because of their looks, that people do not uh, find them attractive. Hmm. So we can treat those clients but how can we treat the society you know yes. that's been modeling this behavior yes. that's been shaping the behavior mm. that's been shaping the minds the only thing to treat the society is to treat through the social media through electronic media through have you know to having by having such programs uh, regarding the mental health and how you have to be satisfied with yourself. Mm. You and to to also, you know, when we talk about female and women empowerment, this is the, what, the very crux of the situation. To be able to give your daughter, you know, the, the really the important platform that she needs in life, you have to give her self-confidence, you have to give her love, you have to give her Absolutely. unconditional support. Absolutely. Make her into a person who has a good education and is able to be a fully functional, exactly. independent, independent person exactly. who can financially sustain Absolutely. themselves. That will make them feel beautiful because be beauty is all about a feeling, feeling, I would think, rather than you anything else. You know, girls who are more independent and educated, they mm. have a different kind of mindset. Yeah. You will see that mm. uh, when, you know, females who attain certain, um, certain position, mm. certain achievement mm. and a certain qualification, they actually go to the point of uh, self-analysis and self-acceptance. Right. That is what we need. Yeah. That is what we want in mm. our society because mm. society is not going to change. No. You need to change. You yourself. need to change it. I love that point. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Another thing. Let's get to some of the questions yeah. I had written. Down. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about fundamentalism and social media. And what exactly is all this? Well, when we talk about fundamentalism, it's basically the strict adherence to the basic principle of any subject and discipline, usually religion. Hmm. People posting statuses on social media regarding religion. Mm. regarding political interest. If someone is having, you know, a uh, counter argument, they will start having a fight on the social media. Yeah. So that is basically creating more like an aggressive pattern in them. Plus, it's so deeply grounded by few of the religious scholars, that uh, social media religious scholars, I must say over mm. here, mm. that uh, they basically interpret the inclusivism under the exclusivist paradigm. Mm. And Hence, alienating mm. a mind and sabotaging its emotional and psychological growth. So and true. mind becomes so impervious mm. to the certain sane arguments. And you actually are shaping a mind that is becoming so incapacitated to the counter argument Absolutely. that you start having a fight with your mates, with your friends, even mm. on the media forums. Mm. So this is, you know, what social media is doing these days on Facebook, on Instagram. And you see that. it everywhere. Yeah. And you see it not just only on social media. You'll see it amongst, you'll see it in the offices. Absolutely. You'll see it on transport. Absolutely. You'll see it outside even maybe in a market, in a bazaar. You'll just see somebody says something to somebody and, you know, they'll say, no, the actual, you know, the actual belief that I am right 
yeah. you are wrong. Exactly. That is just something that you, you just can't carry on with that in the exactly. practical exactly. world. Exactly. And then, of course, you know, it's so much to do with tolerance because then you are becoming an intolerant person. And once you are intolerant, then nothing is going to be okay to you. Absolutely. No one is going Absolutely. to be okay to you. Absolutely. So how do you get people to you know, to understand that they are. Techniques. There are ang anger management techniques that we ask clients to have, but if uh, these techniques are, you know, not having a good effect on a patient, patient is not uh, getting recovered by that, then there is a role of a psychiatrist, uh -huh. because uh, then, we, uh, then we asked him to go for the medications, uh -huh. because usually people who are intolerant are having aggressive pattern. Uh -huh. People who are intolerant, impatient, mm. they're more uh, into the aggressive pattern, they're more aggressive uh, people. Right. They are not going to accommodate mm. any counter argument. Mm. They won't sit in the different people. Mm. They won't sit in the different minds. They're not ready to entertain that anybody has Absolutely. a different approach to they life. They just say that, even uh, Dr. Mumtaz said in one of his lecture, that fundus never want anyone to have fun. <laughs> so this is something like, uh, very important, we need to understand. Unless it's their version of fun. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> very right. That. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it's been wonderful talking about uh, today's uh, topic. Maruk, has been wonderful speaking to you. Thank you so and, uh, much. And unfortunately, we've run out of time. Otherwise, there was so much more we could have been, you know, talking about. But I'm sure we'll be able to do that in it a It was a lovely program. experience. Thank you so much, Maruk. Thank you. Okay. So with that, we have come to, to the end of today's program. You know, all these things are uh, quite a bit of a wake-up call for many people. And um, I certainly got a jolt when, you know, Madhuk said that one hour a day of social media. Okay, you know, to make it real, maybe a bit more than that. <laughs> so, um, but be mindful of what you do, where you're placing your energies and what actually you're responding to and what are you receiving? Uh, how is your behavior being affected by social media? Be happy, be healthy and keep yourself mentally strong as well. Until next week, bye-bye.